Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Rasta, the guy with the guy here today to review and to give my thoughts, my pretty much in-depth thoughts since I use this for our wedding, for the Aperlite YH700N. So you may have seen this is basically around the time where a lot of YouTubers are getting out, they're testing, and they're and they're really seeing this Aperlite Flash product. You know, you may have never heard about them, but as I said, it's really kind of coming up now, especially with a lot of the third-party flashes really taking a hold of the flash photography game from the you know the bigger Nikons and Canons because they are super expensive. Great quality, don't get me wrong, but they are super expensive. But you can get products like this and other third-party ones for under a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars, and that's what separates a lot of these from the t the higher end ones, is because it's essentially a lot of the same quality for a fraction of the price for the amateur, hobbyist, or professional photographer. Trapperlite reached out to me and they wanted me to test uh, the seven, the YH700N, which is this unit right here. I'll show you a bunch of close-ups, obviously, as I'm talking about that, to really go over it, express my thoughts, and you know what are some things that could be improved and everything like that, and. You know, I, I, I was able to use this. I was going to review it pretty much right away. Like, I usually have a couple days to review, and then I get the uh, the review out there. But the thing is, I you know, I was running into a couple of things, and I was actually able to use this on two weddings. So I really have a more comfortable and in-depth feeling and thoughts that I could say about this app or like compared to maybe some other YouTubers that do, you know, that do what we usually do. So you show you in a close up now, the size of this thing is really big. It's very bulky. Essentially I'll compare it to one of the higher end Canons and Nikons, especially like the Nikon SB900, 910. You know, here's a side by side of the, uh, of this app or like compared to my Nikon SB800 and it is thick. It's big. It's a powerful flash. And when I say powerful, once again, I use this at a wedding with a really high ceiling don't know the measurement, but I was bursting out, you know, one fourth power, one over one, and I was getting fantastic power, fantastic bounce results from it. So I, I actually trust this flash. I'm not just saying that because I have it, you know, I really do. It's extremely simple to use. There's not a lot of menus, there's not a lot of buttons, there's not a lot of things like you see on the back right here. It is what it is. Now there are a couple little quirky things that I'll cover in a second, but overall it's very easy to turn on. There's just your on and off switch here, which you turn on and you know, it takes four AA batteries that you can have right here and that's very simple to use and put in. And once again, you just kind of go through it. There's your pilot mode, which is, you know, your test so you can test the flash to see if it's working. You have your light, which is extremely simple to use. You have your high speed sync, which I'll cover in a second as well. You have your music button. I guess that just turns the music on or off. Still haven't figured that out. And your zoom ahead and then plus how to, uh, you know, change the flash power and uh, wide settings. And essentially this is this. Th the great thing about this is that it supports TTL compared to some other flashes that do not. So it does do TTL. It does connect with um, with Canon's radio connections with their flashes and everything like that. And Nikon's creative lighting services, their CLS. So this is a robust, you know, flash, but a lot of other ones out there do do it as well, but some don't more than other brands and Aperlite actually does. You get your typical settings, your one to one full power up to one one twenty eighth, which is your little fill flash, a little dink. And you also get your 24 to I think 105, I think this does for your zoom head and 16 millimeters when you actually pull out the, uh, the wide angle diffuser, which is right here. And I'm going to pull that out you know, right here, and this is what you get, and you get your little flash card. So for under a hundred bucks, I think I didn't mention the price. As of right now, if you go check this out, this is $89.99. Under a hundred dollars, you get something like this that has a lot of power, a lot of kick, you know, and as I said, this really does have a lot of kick. They say the life of this can range between 150 shots all the way up to like a thousand, and that it can support a high speed sync, which I unfortunately really didn't get to work. And I've tried with a, uh, a Fuji camera, I've tried with my Sony A6000, and obviously with a uh, with two of my Nikon cameras that it can support up to one eight thousandth of a second. Let me double check that. And according to the box, that's what it says. It supports high speed sync with a maximum shutter spin, a shutter sync of a hundred uh, of one eight thousandth of a second. I couldn't even really get past 250 to be honest with you. And I really tried and I tried to crunch it down on, I had the settings on here. I had the settings on the camera that typically worked when I did this before with other things and other flash triggers and everything like that. Uh, and I just couldn't get it there. Is that a totally a big thing for me? Absolutely not. But that helps if you could do it, 
outside and everything like that in bright sun to totally dial that down without having to use a very small aperture. So, you know, with all the typical spec things aside, my overall thoughts about this was I was actually pretty pleased with this. Now, I guess I did have two big, two big quirks with this, and that is the, uh, and I, I do use the uh, diffuser here a lot, especially when I'm in a wider setting. This is pretty difficult to, you know, get out and use. It's, it's, it's very hard, you know, and if you don't get it to stick in, it really kind of falls out and everything. And, you know, I just, I don't, I don't like that 100%. Now, I do like that it has it. I just wish it was easier. It has to, like, snap in place, and it does take a little bit uh, to get used to. And the other thing that really kind of I, I wish was better was the mount system. This is, you know, there is hardly any throw right here to get from locked to unlocked, and it is very, very hard to actually get my fingers in and to even use it on a small trigger and especially on my camera. So I wish that there was a little bit more throw in regards to how you would mount this, but I guess that's a minimal thing, but it actually means a lot to me because I just want to be able to do it comfortably. But overall, is this a deal breaker? Absolutely not. I think for around $100, you can't ask for anything more. And this does give you a, you know, the high end features of a $400, $500 flash for under $100. So as a wedding photographer, I do approve of this and I really did think that it performed very well. Uh, and also another thing, I found going above 1 8th, 1 4th power that it would be like almost a four or five second uh, recharge time. So, you know, it claims like three seconds and I say it's a little bit more. So if you wanna shoot fast, this might not be the best thing for you, but if you're doing normal stuff, if you're not doing high speed sync and all that kind of stuff, this is a, an easy flash that I could totally recommend.